Hey friends, it's been a while since I've done a Faith Talks and I just felt ready to do one today. Um, I have been through quite a bit the last few months and my dad passed away April 15th and then from there it was just like so many other attacks on mine and Carl's life and relationships with people, not each other, but other people, um, our finances, jobs, everything you can think of, we've been hit with. <laughs> we both got in this major depression. I mean, just, I could still like, you know, cook, clean, get out of bed, go to the gym on occasion, but I just had, like, I just couldn't do much. I just sat on my couch and I just cried. <laughs> I just cried and cried and cried and and um, I was stuck in the valley of Baca and my dad used to have a message on that, leave the tears behind and that comes from Psalm 84 and it's called um, the valley of Baca or the valley of weeping and my dad used to tell this sermon, you know, he's like, we got to get out of Baca, get out of that place of weeping, the valley of tears, the valley of misery. He's like, don't live there. You don't camp in Baca. You don't live in Baca. I knew this, you know, I knew it, but I was like sitting there for a few months, just the, in the valley of weeping and tears and, and misery in it. And it wasn't just his passing. It was like all these other things just hit us. And we both were just like numb, like we couldn't move, like we're just hit. And then it became a depression. But before that depression hit us, um, I would say a week or so after my dad's memorial service, I was um, asleep and, and I heard, you know, like, I just heard the Spirit of the Lord saying to me what, what my dad would want me to do, and that's continue. And it really went off in me because dad used to say that the, the verse that changed his life was John 8, 31, 32. If you continue in my word and you remain, this Translation says, um, if you remain faithful to my teachings and you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. It says, um, if you're faithful or you continue in my word, you'll be my disciple. Dad said that word continue jumped off the page of his Bible down into his heart because he said he had never been a good finisher. He'd always been a good starter. But when he saw that word continue, the Lord said, when you get a hold of that, when you learn to continue in your life, then you're going to be the man of God I've called you to be, the, the minister I've called you to be, the father, husband I've called you to be. So dad took off when he saw that word and he remained faithful. He continued. He was a disciple of Jesus, 55 years strong preaching the gospel to his very last breath. And so when I woke up about a week after his service, I just heard that down in my spirit, continue, Jerry, continue, continue. That's what your heavenly father would want you to do. That's what your earthly father would want you to do is continue. And that's for you today too. That's for every one of us. Every one of us that our believers were to continue, but the enemy's gonna come all the time. He comes all the time to steal, kill, and destroy. We know that. And he never wants us continuing. He never wants us finishing our job, finishing the course, finishing the set purpose that God has for each and every one of us. My set course and my purpose is to preach Jesus. But the enemy doesn't want me to. He wanted me to live in the valley of weeping and tears and have all these attacks hit me and me just be stuck, just sitting there crying, going, okay, maybe I'm not called. Maybe I shouldn't be in ministry. Maybe I'll just be a hermit in my house. 
Maybe I'll get off social media and be a recluse. All these thoughts, but yet the Lord was saying, no, continue, continue, continue. So after a few months, it's been three months of me sitting in the valley of misery and weeping and tears. But I know too much. And I have the Holy Spirit down on the inside of me. And if you're a born-again believer and you have the Holy Spirit, maybe you feel that stirring too. You're just restless. You don't like where you're at right now. You don't like that you're just sitting here not doing what you're supposed to be doing. I started feeling the last few weeks this restlessness. Like, this is not my purpose to sit here and cry. My dad would not want me sitting here crying. Yes, I miss him so much. And I cry tears because I miss him. But he wouldn't want me living in the valley of misery and weeping to get up. That's not my home. That's not my final resting place is in that valley. So if you feel like you're in that place right now that you've just been, just no hope, frustrated, discouraged, then I want my life to be an example to you right now to get up despite, now listen, nothing's changed. <laughs> like nothing in the outside has changed. We're still going through challenges. We're still believing God for things to change in our life. But I refuse to sit around anymore and mope and be sad and feel sorry for myself and, and question things. I had to get up out of that valley and go get up and go where God wants me to go. One step at a time, one faith, baby step at a time, if that's what it is. And that's what you're going to need to do, too, if you feel like you're in that place is get up and take that first step. Get up off the couch. Get off, get up wherever you've been. Just maybe it's internally. Maybe you're still going through the motions. You're going to work. You're doing all the things you're supposed to do, but inside you're just in that valley. Well, I'm telling you to get up by faith. And the way I do it, the way I had to get up by faith is get in the Word. Get in the Word. Start listening to the word. Start listening to what God says. Get in my Bible. Start reading it. Every morning I sit on my couch and I read the word. And it's amazing. Um, a scripture will come that I've known or seen all my life. It'll come and I'm like, wow, that was exactly what I needed to hear. Let me see if I can find this one. Um, it's in Deuteronomy. It was Deuteronomy 1. <laughs> Going through the whole book of Deuteronomy was the first chapter. Deuteronomy 1, 1, 6. It says, you have stayed at this mountain long enough. It's time to break camp and move on. So, I mean, even in Deuteronomy, I got a word. I saw that it said, you've stayed at this mountain long enough. It's time to get up and move on. So that's my word for you today. If you have been in that valley that I was talking about, then it's time to get out of the valley, quit going around the same mountain of depression, discouragement, whatever it is, get up and get moving. In that Psalms 84, when it says, when they walk through the valley of weeping, it will become a place of refreshing springs. So those tears will come, become a refreshing place of springs. But the key here is it says when you're walking through the valley of weeping, you don't sit in the valley of weeping. Like I did for three months, you don't sit there. You walk through it. Things happen in life. Daddy died, it happened. But I don't sit there. I get up and I walk through that valley. So if you're in a valley right now, don't sit down. And if you've been sitting down like I was, then get up. Get up by faith and let those tears become springs of refreshing for your life. And going back to John 8, where it says, continue in my word, if you'll continue. This is Jesus speaking, and he said, if 
You'll continue in my word. You'll be dis my disciples. You'll know the truth and it'll set you free. That's what we have to do is keep on keeping on. Continue in the word. Continue when you don't see anything changing. Continue when the circumstances are saying differently. That you get up, wipe the tears, and you continue. I hope that blesses you today. I'll see you again real soon.